everyone, it's Alicia again. Welcome back to my channel. Really excited to have you join me for this video today. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to be successful and get things done even when you're feeling overwhelmed. This is something that's really important to me because as a graduate student and a mom, I had a really difficult time with this at first. I would get really overwhelmed and it would just prevent me from getting anything done. So I had to develop some techniques that I use to get myself over feeling overwhelmed and back into being productive. This is super important as a graduate student. Any number of things can make you feel overwhelmed and getting out of that is really important. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. The exciting part about this is that there is only two different techniques or methods that I use to get out of this feeling. Not a lot of complicated things to remember. There's no checklist that I have to run down. It's just two things. There's also two different situations that I apply this to. So the first is when I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. You know that feeling when you're starting to see that you have a lot of things to do, you don't know really what to do first, and you're kind of starting to feel like, oh my gosh, this is too much, but you're also not in the trenches where you just want to lay on the couch and take a nap because you don't want to do anything because you have too much to do. So when you're starting to feel like that, this is the first technique that I use. I love to take a breath, take a moment and sit down with just a blank piece of paper. It can be in my planner, it can be in my journal, it can just be a random sheet of paper that I grab. And I like to do a brain dump of everything that I can think of that would be on my to-do list. I love lists, I love planning, planning and doing a couple different videos about my to-do lists and planning. And I just love lists. So I always have a to-do list going normally more than one, but I choose in these moments to not look at those lists that I already have done and to create a new brain dump because I found that if I look at my list, it just keeps creating that mentality of, oh my gosh, what do I do? There's so much on this list already. With the brain dump, what's really nice about it is that once you are finished, First of all, it kind of helps empty my mind. Everything that was rolling around inside my brain kind of gets dumped out onto the sheet of paper. That helps right away clear my head. The second thing is that I then am able to compare this new list with my already existing list and see normally the things that I put on the new list are things that are either really important and have to get done or things that I'm anxious to do and I've been thinking a lot about, so they've kind of been clogging, clogging my brain up. You know how when you are anxious about something, it's almost all you can think about, or even when you're trying to work on another task, it keeps coming up. So this way, I see in that brain dump all of those type of tasks. And those are the tasks that I'm going to focus on first. So I like to compare that to my existing to-do list and pick out a specific number of tasks that I'm going to complete for a given time period. Normally, if this is happening, normally, <laughs> normally when I'm starting to get overwhelmed, it is about midday when maybe I haven't had a really productive morning, so I've kind of let things go. So normally I pick a number of tasks that I know I can get done with my time remaining in that day. And I focus on those tasks. I like to think that five is usually a reasonable number. Granted, if one of those tasks is something that's going to take you the rest of the day, I might reanalyze and maybe break that down into smaller tasks because it's never fun to have one task feel like it's going to take you half a day or a whole day. So I break it. If I have a big one, I break it up. But once I have those five tasks, then I focus on getting those five tasks done 
for the day. Usually, this technique help, helps reset me, and by the end of the day, I have gotten five things done, I felt really productive, and I go to sleep knowing that tomorrow is a fresh day, I can restart in the morning, and I don't have to hopefully have that unproductive morning again. That being said, um, also I try and make sure to plan my morning so that it doesn't happen again, but I will talk more about that in another video, so I don't want to go into detail with that. So that's technique number one. The second technique that I found that I use is a little bit different because after I've gotten past that stage of starting to feel overwhelmed and starting to look at it like, oh my gosh, I'm already in it. I already feel overwhelmed. Like I said, I normally when I get that way, I feel like I just want to lay on the couch and take a nap for the rest of the day because I'm never going to be able to get everything done. So why bother doing anything? I know you've probably all felt that way at least once. Don't lie. <laughs> I felt that way multiple times, especially happens during midterms, final season, right when you're trying to get your research project done. It also happens to me in times like when we move across country, which we just did. Uh, during this move, I actually was starting to feel overwhelmed and I kind of couldn't hop off the train because I just had to keep going with the move. So when I'm already feeling overwhelmed and I'm already feeling in the trenches, instead of looking at my to-do list or trying to brain dump all my to-dos, which is something that I tried and in these instances, it just really didn't work for me. It got me more crazy feeling, so instead, I stop, take a breath, look around me, and pick out one task that I see that I know needs to get done, should get done, can get done. Literally just the first thing that I see, I start doing. For example, for me, the other day after I move, this was me looking around and I could see three piles of laundry in the one room I was in. So I gathered up that laundry into one load, just one, brought it to my washing machine and started it. Now once I've actually done that, started the process, felt like I've gotten at least something accomplished, no matter how small that something was, then I'm able to find some more motivation to keep going. Now this isn't an, always an easy thing to do. Normally I have to keep mentally prepping myself, mentally psyching myself up to keep going. So the other thing I do during this time is I set timers, short timers. 20 or 30 minutes works best for me. And during that 20 or 30 minutes, I focus on doing a task that I see that needs to get done. This case, I did the laundry, I set my timer, and then I went and set up my kids' dressers in their rooms so when the laundry was done, I had somewhere to put it because that was part of the problem. When it comes to schoolwork, a lot of the times I will look at my desk, see what's on my desk, and do that. That is the first thing I normally do especially when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Because like I said, although I love my lists, if I were to sit down at my desk, pull out my list, pull out all of my textbooks, or pull out my master list of assignments that are due, I start feeling overwhelmed even more. I keep getting that feeling and normally I just leave it. I'll get up and walk away because I don't want to deal with it. So instead, if I know it's schoolwork that I need to focus on and I know that's what's overwhelming me, I sit down at my desk and I start doing the first thing that I see. This works to get me started. Once I'm started, once I've spent 20 or 30 minutes working on a task, normally I've calmed myself down enough and my brain has reset and I have some more clarity that then I can go back to the first technique. 
back to my list, back to a brain dump and start planning again and then keep going with those five or so tasks for the rest of the day. That's how I've managed getting overwhelmed, getting out of it and continuing to be successful. Like I said, it's literally two techniques. There's not a lot of technical steps to them. There's little to no technology. I use my watch as my timer so that I don't have to pick up my phone because the moment you touch that phone, you know that there's gonna be something else that seems better to do, like scrolling through social media, but is actually not better to do, especially when you're feeling overwhelmed. So it's just two things that really are easy for me. I found that I fall back on them a lot and they help reset me, help me be productive, help me be successful. And I continue to keep using them with my life after graduate school. As I go back into graduate school, I know I'm going to use them again. Obviously, I try not to need them. I try to be organized. I try to plan. Life throws you curveballs. You get stressed because deadlines catch up to you. Anything can happen and you need some way to get out of it. So I really hope that you enjoyed hearing about how I deal with it. I'd love to hear from all of you in the comments if you have specific ways that you overcome feeling overwhelmed, if you think that these techniques would work for you. I would love to hear anything. Also, if you have anything that you, else that you'd like to hear about from me in these videos, I would love to share with you. Things are starting to get closer to the start of the program. Got about a month and a half left from the filming of this video and I'm really getting excited, planning on hopefully filming a first day of graduate school. So look forward to that. If you're interested in that, more graduate school content, more tips and tricks, please subscribe. I'd love to have you join me. I'm looking forward to talking to you next time. Bye.